Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to show you how we process the Onyx um, print uh, resin. Now, this is on regular Onyx. It's not Onyx Tough. Onyx Tough is a little bit easier in the sense of uh, being able to throw it in the wash and uh, dry unit. With Onyx, you can't do that. Um, so, here we go. I'm going to just kind of walk you through it. It's, it's pretty simple. And this is actually just a flipper. I've shown videos recently on how to design a flipper in about five minutes or so. Uh, if you're already designing a circle guide in blue sky plan so um, there's other ways to do it but anyway check out that video if you want to see how i design this and i'm going to jump right into it so first thing what do i have available i've got the print remover i've got the uh nips to kind of cut, cut off supports if i need it a lot of times i don't need it but i'll have i have them out i've got two pair of gloves okay and i got a patient bib and um let's go ahead and set this up for now you can stay right there it's fine whatever um Patient bib, the reason I have this is I actually put this in the sink because we're going to be spraying a lot of alcohol and resin getting off. I don't want to just throw it down the drain. So I place this right in here so that when I'm spraying it, it's going to hopefully get mostly all collected right in there. So again, two pair of gloves because the very first thing I'm going to do is remove the print and the supports and it's just going to get kind of nasty. So I just have another pair ready to go for that. So here is... The this is the Sprint Ray Pro 55, and there's the 95S. Um, take it off now. You can try and conserve resin by kind of scraping off the excess in there, and I don't think that's a bad idea at all. This one's been sitting in the printer waiting, so most of it's dripped off. There's just not much to collect in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my scraper, and I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, you can go ahead and come on over. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of get close to it so when it drops, there simple enough, it fell off, and that way it's somewhat padded. Um, being that that's not actually touching the bottom. All right, let's go ahead and put this back in here for now. I'm just going to do a quick scrape of anywhere where it was in contact. That way I know that there's no chunks being left in there and we'll wipe it off later, off after the video. Technically I could start printing right there. I wouldn't have any problem with that. Don't like to leave resin just sitting on things. so. We'll alcohol this off. We always wipe them off and then alcohol them off typically. Okay. All right, so here is our, our uh, flipper. Okay, you've got a single canine Pontic. Um, just shared another uh, post about one like this, just like this, and it happens to be it. I have another one on Monday next week. So um, to get the supports off, most of the time, I can just kind of compress them. And the, the whole support structure will just sort of peel away. Now I have not printed this one before, so this I don't have like a rehearsal to know how easy it's gonna work. Um, that's why I've got the nips at the ready. Now this right here is a very minimalist flipper. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to scan into the floor of the mouth all that well. So um, I didn't, I wasn't able to extend it down into the floor very well. So there's a chance I might even break this. I don't think I will. Uh, and if I do, I'm, I'm just gonna keep rolling with the video because whether it breaks or not, it doesn't matter for the video. Um, I don't think I'll break it, but I'm just warning you that I'm prepared for that if it happens. Um, this actually might not even be needed for the patient. I'm planning to place an immediate temp, but, you know, best laid plans of mice and men. So here we go. This is all cleaned off. All the supports are pretty much gone. There's a couple kind of floating around there, but that's okay. I'll get those rinsed off. So first, I'm just going to set this down in there and get rid of these gloves. So coated that I can barely even grab a hold. You might say it's a waste because I'm just about to spray alcohol. Eh, probably should have. I probably should have done my first little rinse off. But I don't want to get this spray bottle, which I forgot to mention. This spray bottle is filled with 99% um, IPA. You could use 91, whatever, but we use 99. I don't want to get it all over here. So I'm just going to town spraying it. Okay. So we need this and then we need compressed air and you'll see that in just a minute and now I'm going to hold it fairly close down here so now the majority of it's cleaned off nor ordinarily I also wear a mask and I even wear a shield wherever it is um, I'm not doing it for this video simply because so you can hear me a little better um, and so you can see me talking, but 
Usually two rinses is all I need for a flipper. I don't need to get every last little bit because I'm gonna throw it in the curing unit and we should be good to go at that point. If you wanna be picky, do three, three rounds of this. All right, that's pretty good. So I'll show it to you. You can kind of, I don't, I don't know how well you can see in the video, but it's fairly uh, matte finish now. It's not real glossy. There's a few areas on the inside, but yeah, pretty matte finish now. So we've got most all the excess off and we're good to go. So now I'm going to bring it over here to the Procure 2. Set it right down in the middle so we can use the bolt mode. And Sprint Ray, Onyx, Center, Start, and yes, we want to use bolt mode. So in four and a half minutes, it should be cured and ready to go. Uh, if in any doubt, cured again. But honestly, I mean, it just depends. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'll make, I'll follow this video up. The second half of this video will be actually showing you how to polish it. So. Okay, so at this point, um, I am aware of this because I'm going to be polishing and throwing some diamond paste up at myself. Uh, so this is the flipper. And I'm going to show you. I'm not going to go through the whole process because it can be a little boring. Um, notice, though, when I made the print, uh, I actually had the, the supports on the bottom. I like that because it's less polishing where the patient's going to feel it uh, as far as their tongue. Yeah, you might have a little dimple that you want to get so that it's not pressed into the gums if it's big, but a lot of times the smallest thing they're not, you know, small thing they're not going to notice with the gum tissue, but they will with their tongue. So um, I kind of prefer that. Um, and yeah. So anyway, if, you're, if you, need, you do have anything that's to be adjusted, either use nips to clip it off. You can even use um, a blade and you can kind of shave off some little pieces. I find that works almost as well or better than a handpiece, just kind of cleaner, easier. Um, but worst case scenario, get out a handpiece and polish it. So last th the, the last thing we need to do is to, make sh is to make it actually nice and smooth for the patient uh, and to make it glossy, shiny. So to do that, uh, I've shared before, these are diamond paste, you can get them on Amazon. I've got a 3,000 grid of 8,000, 14,000, and 50,000. I'm going to go from the 30, 000, the 3,000 to the 14 to the 50. Um, I don't know that I'll show you even all three of those. I'm certainly going to show you the three um, just to kind of show you how I use it. There's no difference between how I use any of them. But uh, I'll see if I end up showing you all of them or not. But uh, yeah, you need this. Now, I don't use these wheels for it because they're just too big. I use these for polishing titanium like abutments. I just use a small Thompson brush. I get these on, on eBay. I can't find them on Amazon. So... Um, but I got links to all the polishing paste on my website. I've also got a, a link to download this burr block that you can print um, that, uh, that stores these. That way you don't have to hold the tips and it keeps it dry and you can mount little brushes in there. So, but I'll use one brush for all the different materials in this. All right, come on over here. Now I have an electric can piece in my lab. Um, whatever you want to use, you can use, you know, the nail trimming units or whatever. Um, now when you, this goes on kind of whatever, I don't know what color you'd call that, but um, it's it's going to turn dark, almost like a, a, an oily black. It's okay. Um, so I'm just going to extrude some on here. I tend to spread it out a little bit so that I can keep picking up more. It's almost like trophy paste in a sense. And I've got the shield so I don't cover myself. All right. Try to coat the brush. There we go. So... If you're watching this video, you've probably done plenty of this in the past on your own. I don't really need to show you how you polish things, but I guess I'm going to anyways. Um, this paste works pretty well, but I also want you to see how it's turning kind of brown. That'll clean off very easily. Um, so don't stress out about that. Uh, sometimes, the first time, my assistants, one of them at least, has mentioned, oh my gosh, it's turning all black. Is there something wrong? Nope. It's fine. Don't worry about it. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing this, especially not with this 3000. I'm just getting the very initial polish. Now I had previously posted about, I don't know that it matters going much higher polish than the 3000 or 8000. And uh, some friends re recommended that, yeah, it really should be going higher. So I've gone up to 50 now. Just, I don't know if it matters, but if the soft tissue really does notice a difference, well, I want to make sure I'm being as kind as I can. So. I do now uh, have my assistants, I say I, <laughs> my assistants polish it up to that, um, that 50. 
So swap this out. Now you're gonna go through a brush, most likely go through the entire brush um, by the time you're done with one of these, um, or the, the, the bristles will get pretty worn down. Maybe not the whole one, depends on what, all your polishing and how much. Um, trying to hurry through here because I don't want to waste your time watching it, but at the same time, I do want to show you how I clean up the end. And I kind of want to show you what it looks like afterwards. I'm not polishing any of the um, tissue side, the intaglio. I am just getting the outside, also known as the cameo surface. Um, I don't need it to be that smooth. Um, now I'm running these all at 8,000 RPM. Um, I don't know what the recommended value is other than I have other diamond polishing pastes that recommend not going above 8,000. So I carry that over to this. Okay, last one, making a bit of a mess here in, this, in the interest of time. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Deb is over here um, filming this video and she's thinking, great, he's making a mess. He's going to expect me to clean it up. <laughs> I don't know why I took the brush out. That was dumb. That's why I made a bigger mess. I didn't even need to take it off. All right. And I'm really lean with this one. This is the last one. It really shouldn't take off any material, but it's going to give us that last finish, the final finish, final smoothness. While the paste is on there, it's going to look really nice because it's wet and glossy looking, feeling and looking. It's not going to look, it's not actually going to be that nice, but it'll be, it'll be really nice when it's all cleaned up. Get that underside of the Pontic area at least. Okay, so it's pretty well polished. So what am I gonna do to clean it up? I just have a couple of alcohol prep pads. Uh, you keep the pause button for a second. Okay, so I just changed gloves. Uh, I didn't wanna have to record that. Um, so I just have a little alcohol wipes ready to go. We have big four by four ones for doing more cleanup, but this is nice just cause you can get nooks and crannies a lot better. You could use your spray bottle in air, I guess, but eventually you're gonna need something, paper towel or something to scrub it with. Uh, toothbrush or whatever um, so I've got a ton of these alcohol white pads so I find them pretty handy for this kind of thing and this is one pad and you can already tell it's pretty well cleaned up so um, in the end I'm done um, I'm trying to wipe it off so that you don't think that there's any alcohol or any wetness still on there um, I want you to see like it is truly dry right now there is no moisture i'm literally wiping it on my skin to suck up it's got a nice finish to it for a flipper i think it's more than adequate um yeah that's it so that's how i process this material um at this point you know i'll probably soak it in something um put a uh, chlorhexine or whatever and then it's ready for delivery okay. okay so that's it for this video um if you have any questions make sure you post in the comments uh you can find these video videos in like the this video and other videos like it uh, on my website, BaronGrotterDDS.com, or on my YouTube. Uh, if you're watching it there, make sure to like it and subscribe, please. Uh, that way you'll see when I post new videos. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.